The Acolyte's fourth episode dropped and it is totally providing even more cannon fodder this time around. I swear it's so easy that it feels like Leslie Headland is making my videos for me. Seriously though, this show has become the most nonsensical piece of trash ever made. Even CW wouldn't put this sort of crap out. Is there any actual point to the plotline? Is there even a plotline to begin with? Join me, dear viewer, as I dive back into the raging dumpster fire that is Disney's Star Wars. Before we get into this, make sure to like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out with continuing to grow, and it's totally free. What the fuck is this piece of shit? Ah, oh, shit. Here we go again. I guess the best place to start would be to do a quick summary of the plotline in this episode, but don't worry, it'll be quick because there really isn't a plotline in any of this. So episode four begins following the events of episode two, which why not just have the stupid flashback episode in the very beginning? But I guess Leslie Headland failed creative writing 101 at Swarthmore. But anyway, female Rick James one, I'm Rick James, bitch, is asked by Jedi Squid Game to help hunt down female Rick James two. I'm Rick James, bitch. But female Rick James one says, no, I know it's important, but I have absolutely zero interest in looking for her. Then Jedi Squid Game tells her, please come, I know May still has some good in her. So then female Rick James says, oh, okay, I guess I'll come then. The normie apologists and wokesters wanna know why people hate the Acolytes so much? Right there, there you go. The piss poor writing is why. It's not because of racism or bigotry or anything like that. It's the writing, plain and simple. But anyway, following this useless scene that doesn't drive the plot any more forward, we see the merry band of morons going for a little afternoon hike in Oompa Loompa Land. As night falls and we see someone following them in the shadows and it's revealed to finally be the bad guy, a discount rusty buckethead Darth Vader. That's it. That's the episode. Oh joy, here we go, diving into the absolute masterpiece that is the Acolyte Episode 4. Let's kick this review off with the stellar writing, shall we? Brace yourselves because only one glorious scene actually propelled the plot forward. Why, you ask? Because only one scene managed to stumble upon the golden rule of writing. Show. Don't tell. I know, shocker. So in this grand episode, we witness the masked Sith strutting his stuff by attacking the Jedi with the Force and creating a dust plume. Wow, what a concept. Actually doing something to reveal character, riveting. It's the creme de la creme of the episode because, surprise, surprise, we get to see who he is through action, not through monotonous droning of the other characters blabbering on about him. No siree, Bob. He's showing us who he is by actually doing something. Groundbreaking. Meanwhile, in the thrilling early parts of the episode, we are blessed with random characters filling our ears with endless exposition. Take the green Lex Luthor, for example, who graciously informs us about a larger, more sinister plan that is supposedly lurking in the shadows. Oh, if only they had thought to, I don't know, maybe show us this looming chaos instead of blabbing on about it. But oh no, that would be too much to ask. Truly, the art of telling rather than showing has never been executed with such finesse. Bravo, Leslie, bravo. Honestly, I see no reason for this garbage to be four episodes. Everything could have been told in less than two. But I guess Leslie Headland needed to get through the entire $180 million Harvey Weinstein hush money payment. I guess old Donnie should have paid Stormy Daniels more and maybe we could finally get our proper Star Wars adult iteration with drum roll please. Star Wars. But I digress. Aside from the discount rusty buckethead Sith revelation, there's really no plotline to be had in this episode. This seems like an awfully expensive way to spend an episode. <laughs> I bet that's expensive. My only question now really is, is someone ever going to check the accounting statement? I mean, Disney is not the Federal Reserve. They don't have Big Daddy j to mint attendees. I'm sure the losses are starting to add up over there. But as I mentioned in my last video, 
whatever Leslie Headland has on her old pal Harvey and his connection to Disney is worth $180 million. That's real Sound of Freedom stuff right there, man. The Acolyte is yet another financial bust for a company reeling from billions in losses in 2023. I honestly don't know what will right the ship other than a Batman Begins style nuking of everyone in the company starting from scratch. You know, I bet if they came out and said this. Yeah, listen, uh, we fucked up. Then maybe fans would have a little more leniency toward the company. Although as it stands now, the train wreck continues and I'm happy to be getting the views and subs on my channel. But what do you guys think about all this? Is there any hope left for Star Wars? And is the Acolyte plotline ever going to finally materialize? Please do let me know down below in the comments. And as always, hit that like button, ring that notification bell, and smash that subscribe button, and I'll see you in the next one. Okie dokie. Yeah.